and I believe that's the time that the angel Gabriel announced the good news of Yahshua to Miriam. So therefore we have a, a mixed blessing there, a judgment for sinners and a judgment of sin. Both of them are about to be sent at that pivotal time of the year. And as we actually read in Revelation 11, starting at 3, I shall give unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy 1,260 days clad in sackcloth. And then we go straight to verse 10. And it says, Those dwelling on there shall rejoice over them and exalt. This is after they've been killed. And they shall send gifts to each other because these two prophets tormented those dwelling upon the earth. Now these are Yahweh's prophets. And it's just the reverse of what's happening to Yahweh's people today. They are being fiercely persecuted uh, in every area, except when these two witnesses begin to prophesy, the reverse will happen. But when they die, uh, the people of the earth will celebrate their death, probably at Christmas, because that's the only time of the year that they give each other gifts. And this is a pagan festival. It's not one of these seven uh, festivals of Yahweh. Now, I have gone into reasons why we shouldn't use um, the five-point or six-point stars as is a rebuke, um, both in the Old and New Testaments, from our Father Yahweh. So that should be reason enough. But uh, there is a video called The Mega Hour. I've gone into a bit more detail as to why we shouldn't. You know, because if we start getting a fascination with them, um, we'll end up just being, you know, doing things and looking at them and uh, seeing there is knowledge of good and evil from these things and end up just casting spells and all that crazy stuff, so we should we just shouldn't go near these type of things. But uh, let's just again look at the, the cross and Levi. I think uh, the root of the word Levi, the Levitical priest, is heart. And there we see right at the heart of the cross, obviously Yahshua um, died for us there. So there's a brief description here. Um, Reuben, sign of the man, so the man had to be sacrificed um, to make us a son of the right hand, we are also sons of the right hand, and this is where Yahshua um, resides, and sits with the Father at his right hand, and I believe this is also where the blood of the Ark of the Covenant, on the Ark of the Covenant was put, and at the right hand or the west side of the Ark. Uh, in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 14, for those of you who are keeping track of these things, it makes the statement that the priest, high priest, was to take of the blood of the bullock, and this was talking about the Day of Atonement, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat eastward. Now, I hadn't noticed that. It simply means that when he stood in front of God's earthly throne, the Ark of the Covenant with the mercy seat, that he was to sprinkle the blood, sprinkle the blood on the right side. Of the mercy seat. That's where we found the blood of bulls and of goats, right? Christ's blood was on the other side, on the left side, facing the mercy seat. Now, if you remember, the Bible tells us that when Christ ascended back to heaven, it says he has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God, all right? Now, that would be if we were facing it, it would be on the left side. You follow me? If you're down there, this is the right side. If you're up here, this is the left side. And so, anyway, Christ physically occupies the place on the throne in, in heaven that his blood occupies on the throne on this earth. Well, Ron says that Christ was crucified against the Calvary escarpment. He says that he found a place where the cutouts were, the three signs were placed in the walls in the three different languages. He also believes that there was a sign on the crossbar itself also. So it was just a repeat of the wording. But there is a split that runs down Cliff's face, and that split goes clear through the mountain. Now, Ron says he excavated down to the point where he found the cross hole. When Christ was crucified, he was stabbed on the side where the spleen is, near the fifth rib, and it holds two to three units of blood. And when you're stabbed at the right, if it's punctured at the right time, it's, it's very flaccid and 
the blood is not congealed yet. And so it managed to splurt out of the body. It fell on the ground. It went in the crack. And Ron says approximately 20 feet below the base of the cross is the cave where the Ark of the Covenant was hidden some five to six hundred years before. The blood traveled down that crack and it dripped onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant that was inside the stone case. When Ron says he found the case, got in that cave in January of 1982, he says that the lid was cracked and the left third of the lid was moved askew on the top of the box, which would have enabled the blood to drip down clearly inside the box. And he says that there is a puddle of Christ's blood. It's black nowadays, not red. But there's a puddle of his blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. It is his blood that atones for the sin of all mankind. The yearly day of atonement, when the goat's blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, that is how the high, the high priest, once a year, atoned for all the sins of all Israel. There is no other place on the planet that's more appropriate for the blood of Jesus Christ to have gone on. The Lord knew where Jesus would be sacrificed, where he would hang on the cross. And so five or six hundred years earlier, when Babylon conquered Jerusalem, the temple priest arranged to have buried the Ark of the Covenant in that cave, led there by God. The siege walls were all around the city, so they, it's obvious they could not remove the Ark of the Covenant from Jerusalem. So it had to be buried within the city walls. And the Bible clearly states that when the Babylonians took the city captive, there's a list of things they took with them to Babylon. And the Ark of the Covenant is not included mm -hmm. in those items. So as you just heard there, um, on the Day of Atonement, it was the high priest that uh, did this. But we know um, that it was a Passover that this happened on. But will this be an indication of when possibly these things uh, could be uncovered? Because we know there is a man of sin that will be revealed to the world. And will Father Yahweh choose to reveal um, these things um, with perhaps uh, the two witnesses or 144,000 being part of that witness? to the world um, so as to make sure people have a choice you know when the mark of the beast comes out then they will have a choice of putting Yahweh's mark or Yahweh's name on their right hands and foreheads in other words accepting his son and all this evidence perhaps will be there at the appropriate time one of Yahweh's feast days and to stay in the subject of the Messiah being a man um, and the father's name when you turn it around it reveals something Again, um, well, check it out for yourself. salvation plan for you and the 144,000 who are being sealed now 
and will be revealed at a certain time so as to bring the good news of Yahshua HaMashiach around the globe um, as it states in the book of Revelation. There we see also the prophecy of the feet of Judah's lawgiver. So the law of Yahweh again um, is written uh, on the believers' hearts and on their minds and it lights the way uh, for us. Um, the Torah lights the way as a lamp unto thy feet as well and it crushes the head of the serpent and uh, again uh, the other prophecies that we've gone through about Dan uh, who was whose name is to be a judge but we, we see um, our sins being judged on the cross and if we accept the Messiah it means that our sins will be separated as far as the east is from the west and Ephraim again not mentioned in the book of Revelation but associated with the strength of his Holy Spirit coming upon us.